Then he can go. Uh, give him the slaps. I give him the slaps. Can Throw hands. Can yeah. we? Can we pause for a second? Does anyone else feel like Undying is just a bad hero right now? Yes. Because I think he is bottom tier. Not the worst, but he's pretty close. He's like a bottom 20 for me, something like that. And that's exactly why I was like, maybe this is the reason that they're pulling it out. Because in like scrims or something, they're mm. like, all right, that's the answer to Bristleback. But I don't know. Yeah. It feels oh. like there's no other reason to take Undyne. Mineski forgot about, uh, well, I don't know if they forgot, but uh, they banned AA and Alk is still in. Ooh. All right. It's kind of interesting. Mm, there's yeah, that, that, that's true. That was that was game one. I'm sure they're remembering that. I'm absolutely positive. Are, are Mineski going for like the timing push here? Is that is that their plan with the jug? So uh, that's the problem with Undying, though. He doesn't really push. He's all timing and no pushing. Hey, right. you put that tombstone up on the not, not a whole lot of scale. Okay, he's not no pushing. He's yeah. little pushing. Okay. Yeah. And it's a he's little a weird with the Rubik pusher. too. Like I would like yeah. something like a. All right, it looks oh, like that's what they're doing. All right, all right. Okay. but yeah. I again, I don't know if that. Is that so? This is the we lose if it goes late draft. Yeah. I that is so scary. Alka missed. Al, don't you, you just pick Alka right here, right? Uh, that's the game we're playing. Maybe yeah, you do bump maybe. it up to a bristleback one, and then you like put the, Enigma the, three because you need more wave clear here, don't you? Uh, you just pick Alk. Yeah, Alk's all you need, baby. I don't even know how much wave clear would help you. I think you could put Enigma three, and then you could like. Wyvern here, maybe, right? That'd be okay. Yeah, that's all. Winter, Winter Wyvern against Beastmaster. To, but, but don't you want something that gives you some late game insurance so that if you beat the timer, you're in great shape? That, that's what Enigma is. Yeah. Uh, Kinda. Some, somebody that carries a little harder. And remember, there's a Rubik on the other team, so Enigma's going to be kind true. of a. Uh, chill. Nice and lane against the Beastmaster. Pretty good at killing the boars. Uh, some late game? Yeah. yeah, some late game. It matches up against Jug, okay. Yep, for sure, hundred percent. Okay, so it does seem like it's just gonna be, and they could still pick Enigma out, three. right? If yeah, if it's not bad. I think Enigma four. I think this is too greedy from Adroit, personally. I I think that uh, I like what you're saying about like you know being able to outstain out sustain the the timing push, but I feel like Troll kind of gives you a little bit of an awkward timing where like he might not be online by the time they need to fight. He he does well yeah. in his lane though, which is gonna slow down the whole push okay. of Maneski in general. They they do need they're gonna need the mech on the Enigma real bad. They yeah. they need to s find a way to approach these guys when they come up to their towers. Is currently there? it yeah. does not look very easy. They they, they can't start fights. Okay. And is there any way to flip this with Maneski where they can make it like Why go would you? later? Oh, what, what they can get the like they can have the late game. Yeah. Or do you need to? I don't know. I don't know if you need to. I think, I think now they've just gotten two big cooldowns in the black Poor hole. Poor silencer. Exorcism. Counter the bristleback with the <laughs> with the arcane curse. Somebody did run that. Hit him with the core silencer. Move. It was Janespress. They yeah. did. I think it. Mineski might just go DK here. Yeah, that sounds good. Play fast. Knock down towers. Twenty minute racks. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Those are those are the kind of lineups where Undying can thrive. How is that lane against DP? I think I it's okay. It's kind of a wash, Dragonite. isn't it? I'm sure yeah. It's fine. It's the I don't think anybody really wins. Nobody wins in that <laughs> lane. <laughs> no, they we all die suck. from boredom. It's true, view. right? It's exactly. Yeah. Pugna it's again. Totally true. Yeah. If they the Ooh, Pugna like is Pugna. kind of all in. It's, it is all in. It's but nice against Troll though. That is the one upside. Yeah. It really messes up Troll's game. And they really need a way to crack high ground and kill buildings. Ninja mm. Boogie, what are you thinking? What's your smile and face pondering? I want to know. How do you know he's smiling? Maybe he's scowling. That guy's always smiling. What are you talking about? You seen Ninja Boogie? He does smile a lot, actually. Yeah, but he might be scowling right now. <laughs> That's true. He could he be. be. Hopefully for them, he's not. Oh. That's the flip around. That's the flip around. Kind I think of. they win late game now. Like, they I don't, don't have uh, to. It, 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 let, me put it, let me rephrase that. <laughs> let me rephrase that. I don't that. think that's they their plan. They don't lose late game. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. That I would agree with. It, it um, gives it gives them a chance. They can, like, with an enormous Storm Spirit, they can. <laughs> big Storm Spirit, big Jug can win this game. Yeah. If it goes late. But I don't think that's, that's even remotely the plan. No. I'm with you. Yeah. This is a tough one to call. Obviously, Mineski have a win condition. The question is, can they do it? How good is Bristleback? Yeah, How good is Undying? I don't actually know. Like, I would rather 
have my Nesky's it, lineup. I is, is Bristleback going to start the game 4 0 or 0 4? Well, he's going to have his lane pulled back, we assume, right? By yeah, the Enigma. That's true. And he's going to be laning there. But the Undying's also just going to have a stick and then keep decaying you. And yeah, the it's, they're both going to have sticks, and it's going to be really messy. Yeah, the Undying's annoying like for like fun. five levels or something. Once the game goes past 10 minutes, Bristleback, as long as he hasn't Yeah, fed, but if Bristleback got fine. spun on three times by a Juggernaut, his game's over. Because he had 300 HP from Decay Spam. Yeah. Pretty pretty conservative from Betway. But he'll have the Enigma. What? Uh, so 1.5 Mineski, 2.3 <sighs> That's Adroit. pretty much how I feel about this uh, game. I, I do favor Mineski yeah. here. Betway I, sniping it? I think it's difficult to execute this lineup from Adroit. I think they have a really strong timing push still themselves. Like, we were talking all about the Mineski push. Like, look at Adroit. Like, Death Prophet ulti. Yeah. Like, they, they, they can it's hit true. the timing here. The first mm. Roche is going to be crazy. First yeah. Roche seems really good this And game. I think yeah. that Adroit get it. Like, Black Hole, I don't know, Exorcism. Tombstone, dude. Got to fight the Hawks, man. The Vision. <laughs> the vision. I think Third I'm, eye. I think the I'm going Adroit. Soul. I'm I think going I'm Adroit, too. I think I'm in the Adroit camp. I'm taking yeah. Mineski. I've been swung. Have you, have you been – wait, who's – no one's been wrong every game, right? Correct. Okay. Don't yeah. think so. No. Trent suggested droid, adroit last time. So. Yes, I was wrong okay, last yeah. game, but I think I was right first game. Uh, yeah. But no, I'll take this one. Okay. okay. All right. I'm well, on adroit. ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. Boom shakalaka. We're going into the game, and my lovely, lovely panelists, we're underneath the blanket of friendship. We'll see you guys after this one. <laughs> I got an awe out of him. That's great. Uh, so man, base kip. Yo, it's been quite the run around this series. Like, what is no. happening today? Nothing. Nothing's going like quite as I expected. I really thought we were gonna. If I looked at the bracket at the start of the day, I thought Genesperus like 2-0 or 2-1, Amplify 2-0 or 2-1, Genesperus versus Amplify upper bracket. Yeah. Mineski versus Adroit lower bracket. Mineski probably not too many issues against Adroit. And Adroit and Mineski both stepping it up. KP with an Orb of Venom start on his Beastmaster. And some Whoa. old tangos. This is the I want to kill somebody right at level one build. Um, I mean, the thing is, is it's not only has things not gone how we feel in the more macro sense, how we thought it was going to go, but it's also like each individual game between Adroit and Mineski specifically has looked so different. And that's not yeah. often the case. Normally, you see games that look kind of similar. Uh, Raging Potato already with the fast fingers getting himself that rune. It's going to be a trade-off of two apiece. Okay. So they the Bristleback walked up to the top. They saw the Beastmaster. I feel like Mineski are setting their lanes in like the standard way. And Adroit also sort of the same thing. They've got the Bane down here at the start, though. I think they want him to fight up against the Undying and tip the balance uh, bottom, at least for now. He'll probably TP top to help out his... This looks Drawing. like such a like previously we've done this in scrim thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the the bristleback is answered by the undyne, and then the end the bane is the answer to the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Undying beats bristle, but bane beats undying. Yes. Is is is, is the is the concept? Is Buckarino just gonna, is he going to actually farm this, or yeah. is he just doubling the wave? I think he doubles it and farms it. Okay. He's got three mangoes, so he can't right. burst. So, so that's why well. the bane is here because somebody needs to take the experience from this first wave. Okay. While uh, yeah, it's it's a waste otherwise. God, back laning has become such a thing, huh? Yeah. And you can't contest Bristleback doing this. Uh, yeah, not really. He's got good. You can't stop speed. him from TPing either. So that's true. I kind of like this because it instantly gets him level two, which makes him much more tanky. Yeah. Could just do it again, to be honest. I don't see why not. Yeah, w it, one more double and he'll get the bottle. It's pretty good. And you don't need to worry as much about being spun on when Juggernaut's over his tier one, anyways. So they yep. did block off this camp. Uh, it looks like. Oh. Um, so blocking the camp so that Jug can't bring it in and farm up both simultaneously. Yeah. I wonder if Jug will spin here to. Like, if he, if he sticks these two waves together, will he just try and spin them down? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Makes sense. So, good play there by Nico Baby. Mid matchup, Storm versus DP. Uh, Max Farman. Yeah. He's getting it. Uh, any kill potential with pull at four, or do you just sort of keep on going for uh, it? Not with the way that Mac plays, I don't think. He yeah. tends to just ferry a lot of salves, stay full HP. Um, oh, that's great. Bach. Buys the bottle with the 
yep. first two wave gold. Oh, and he gets a gets an arcane. Yeah. Dang. All right, that's a huge that's a huge spike. Um, interesting that so you know Mac, we've been seeing him get the like the bracer in some of these matchups. Yeah. This time he goes for the double null. So it is it is matchup dependent. He's not just autopiloting the same build every game. He feels like. Uh, he has more of an opportunity to be aggro. And I think the main reason in this matchup is because the Storm's going to come up to the wave to put down a Remnant, and you can just hit him while he does that. Oh, so. and I'm loving this this lane right here, too, because look at Enigma is going to be stacking up the Ancients for the Bristleback. All right. This is this sick. Is yeah, this is really good. All right, they've, they've got some they got some Bristle strats up their sleeve. Yeah. Bach wants to get far enough away. Oh, wait a minute. Sips. Excuse me. Whoa, 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 whoa. And Mac takes it to the tower, too. 421 gold versus 142. Oh. oh well done. Very nice. So we thought it might have been, oh, I thought it might have been the solo kill on the uh, Death Prophet, but Moon sticks around a little bit too long, gets punished. Yeah. He, he, he wanted his bottle. He didn't want to ferry another salve or anything. But yeah. now the Death Prophet has a salve and a full wand and his full bottle, so he can just keep playing. Oh God. Look at Bach. This is sick. Oh, uh, Ninja Boogie's going to deny some of them, but he's farming the wave and then also farming the hard camp. Boogie's still level one. Dude. Like, man, is struggling. Is this another ancient stack for the Enigma? Oh. Wow. Boomy. He, he got the Midnight Pulse as well to, like, cut down these trees and make the stacks more reliable. Yeah. That's actually awesome. He's going to be able to make this, like, a six or seven stack Yeah. because he, because he can go north. That's so cool. Adroit strats. This reminds me of seeing the uh, Witch Doctor Naga backlaning. Oh, yeah. Like, it's always cool to see these. Th there are things that different teams theory craft first and then start to become meta after that. Like, think about Centaur getting Retaliate stacks. How long did it take for people to be like, we went, it, it was overnight, right? We saw somebody run down mid and get three Retaliate stacks off yep. the tower, and then everybody's like, oh yeah, that's of course the optimal play. Let's all do that. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's how I feel when we see some of these cute little strats deployed. Maybe not to the same extent, because this is a little bit more niche and it's like two heroes instead of just one hero in the early game, but right. I love that Dota isn't figured out. Yeah, All totally. Moon makes the movement over to secure bounty runes, which does allow him to refill his bottle. Or is that quad for? Oh, that's pretty that's rough. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, that's really nice. Boomy gonna get spun on here. TP's away and completes it. Gets home, and now just like that, Bach. Oh, dude, can he even do this? Oh my God, that was. Really close to him just dying. So Bach saves himself with the salve at the last second, and he's going to clear these up. Oh, man. And while I'm looking at that, we do see CML go down. But, I mean, this is this is a huge play for he's him. Gonna, he's going to have a Vanguard so fast this game. Like, what the heck? Like, the this, this by itself, I think, is going to slow down Mineski's timing by a few minutes. Like even a fast Crimson Guard this game against the Beastmaster and his summons, like the Bristleback is going to be an absolute monster. <gasps> oh, the sleep into Malefus? Or are they just doing yeah. it to? Okay, they just wanted to get the rune. I thought they were going to come over with like a silence on Bain, the run, DP or run something. to your Death Prophet. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I don't know why he was running back the other way. He should just beeline the Death Prophet. But anyway. Mac once again with this uh, ult at level six. They rotate in with Boomy as well. They're tanking up the tower. They got the siege creep. This is nice damage. Ninja Boogie is only level two right now. And I don't know if they're going to be able to fully get it. It looks like they will, though. And it does go nice. down. Mac gets a kill. Well, that is by far the earliest that they've gotten the tier one tower mid in this series. Other ones, it was still like. 20 minutes and they hadn't gotten it. Yep. I mean, other than some minor hiccups like the Bane dying and uh, losing four bounties, this early game is looking pretty pristine from Adroit. Uh, Troll is doing okay at top. I mean, the Beastmaster is getting a lot of farm up here because he doesn't really have, didn't have a ton of help right from the start. You can even just see it. The Troll's six, Bane's only three, right? So CML's been doing other stuff on the map. Yeah. But you compare these other uh, heroes, and the Bristleback currently second highest net worth in the game, with now another double stack of these ancients here. And yeah, 
Yeah, Bach is farming. Bach is doing it. Nico Baby also very farmed because he doesn't really have to worry that much about farming underneath this tower. But with now what's been what? Six, seven stacks of ancients that Bach has cleared yeah. through. He's the top net worth in the game. Yeah, he, I mean he's got the most last hits, but those last hits are also all insane value. There, a lot of them are ancient creeps. Yeah. So it doesn't even tell the full story. Um, and like once they have Mech or Greaves on this Enigma, yeah, they can really just run with it. So Mac gets the kill. They have Exorcism back off cooldown. This is. This is pretty. Uh, this is pretty scary. I'm trying to figure out if Troll's going to go Maelstrom or if he's just going to go like Diffusal. Are yeah. they going to? Are is the plan to exploit this timing to try and win, or is the plan to use this timing to create space? Right. It's. I'm very curious to see what Adroit's read is on the game. Another coming up here with another exorcism used. I'm not sure, but uh, whatever it is, I feel like it's going to work. Either space created or game yeah. one. They can kind of do what they want. Mineski are going to bring everybody. Four heroes top right now. And do Droid just TP elsewhere with the Exorcism? He's just going to farm with it. Okay. M Moon came up here no, as well. Look, he's he's going to keep some extra duration of the Exorcism and maybe take the bottom tier one? I can't They know it. that he's here. Yeah. It's, it's just pressuring. Just linking up with the strongest tier on the map, Baccarino. Actually, having left top, Mineski, they want to defend. Okay, uh, all they the walk floors. into him. Back, he doesn't get the regen back in time. And a great play with that roar. Find the kill. Bach is just going to have to TP out. So a good reaction from Mineski. They walked the heroes there so they could TP afterwards. Yeah. That's two core TPs, but Moon goes straight back to farming. And they do have the Jug who can TP away and go find farm elsewhere. So it doesn't, doesn't cause too many problems. Oh. Rubik. Oh, bit of danger. Tombstone. Going to uh, be taken down. Some extra gold there. Going to the Bane, it looked like. Yep. And maybe they can try and pressure the uh, Tier 1 here with Eidolons available. They should be able to grab both top bounties. They know the two heroes TP'd bottom. Yeah. So I should be able to get a full heal and bottle refill on Bach. No Tombstone either. Ninja Boogie's not going to do anything. I'm surprised they're not trying to pressure this tower since they're in TPs. Yeah, they're, wa they're walking back now afterwards. So Nico Baby is pushing towards the mid one a little bit. And in the meantime, Bach just behind the tower. And Nico going a slightly farmier build, Maelstrom. Not that out of the ordinary. But. Uh, is that Eidolons? Well done. Nice. And in the meantime, KP takes the bottom tier one tower. So a lot of pressure from all of the teams right now. The yeah, question is, can they hold mid? Both offlaners have so much farm. Like, the, the two offlaners are among the top three net worth. This is a really weird game. Yeah. Oh, he walks in. Boomy there, roared, caught, mm, killed. Moon was super ready for that one. They wanted a black hole right out of it. To no avail. CML. Oh, the boar slowing him down. Nice. They do have a nightmare as well as the bull, oh, but silence comes out. Moon trying to walk away. Gets the zip TP, and he's fine. Oh, that was so nice. Man, Moon has been having a, a very nice two games. He here. Is, he's pushing the limits, though. Like, I don't know how many people would have gone for that Bane kill. <laughs> yeah. But. Just se secures the bonus. Got 500 gold out of kills off of that bottom lane. And recovering his game very nicely. Yeah. Top side. Bach going to be pulled back in. Oh, they got to be careful about the. Oh. <laughs> you zip all the way. You see Storm has like a third mana left. And Bristleback is 100% HP with a Vanguard. You leave. You, yeah. you, you don't go for that. So we did have some questions about how good is this Bristleback in this game. Uh, has yeah. the last couple of minutes given you any more clarity about that situation? Uh, well, it depends on whether or not they actually use him to go and do things right. or or not. 
There's only one tier one left. The line's being drawn by Bach. I think he wants to push out like two waves mid and then join the rest of his team bottom to take out another tier one tower. They will probably lose top tier one as the trade. Moon is already cutting the wave up there. He's got a complete read on this movement, but they're trying to cut off the Bristleback. Again, scary prospect. They do have the Omni Slash, gonna use it now, bring him super low, the oh lift no, up Bach. and the tip. Tried to take the shortcut through the river. Well, he thought he was not work. He thought he was unkillable, but that's a big mistake. So now what? They lose top tier one for free? Oh god, that's really bad. Yeah. All right, Baccarino on these. Uh, I don't know if these aren't heroes that he plays as much, like the Bristleback and the Razor, but that's two games now where he makes some weird positioning mistakes and costing his team some timing. I'm a little bit more glad that the troll is going for the Maelstrom here. Just because it, it doesn't seem like they're going to be ending this game within the next 15 minutes or anything like that. Storm is already getting pretty big, and Storm only gets stronger the closer you get to his base. Like, pushing tier 3s against Storm, even before the 25 talent, is pretty miserable. Yeah. So I guess I just gotta farm up. Wrestleback can be strong later on in the game, right. especially with this kind of a start. Uh, I don't think people underestimate it necessarily, but the amount of damage that Warpath can do yeah. is pretty ridiculous. I will say that the the Crimson Guard, uh, you know, that that felt like it was more about the timing push thing, which it looks like they're gonna try and do now. Um, take down this bottom tier one tower, and Moon breaks the smoke there onto Bane. Again, just looking like he has a really good idea of, of what's going on in this game. And do they want to fight this? No, it looks like the call just push out these side lanes. Maybe even just let them take the tier one tower because, yeah, this move is it's just coming, what, a minute and a half too late. Look, they would have traded the top tier one for this bottom tier one. Yeah. So I think they're quite happy to just let them have it at this point. They're going to have the much better lane position. Mid lane's getting pushed by Boogie. Top lane's getting pushed by Nico. Storm's also farming, and if they disengage in the wrong way here, Moon's going to punish them. Yeah. He's lurking, and a droid is splitting up. I don't it think you can kill Bok, though. Yeah, you need way more heroes. It, it, it took everything that they had last time, pretty much. Yeah. They are they bringing in more now, though. All right, that's all three cores. That's good jump for them, but they do have the Nightmare save. And, uh, no, they nightmared uh, the Beastmaster instead, and Bok is just dead. Yeah, they, yeah, they nightmared the Storm. They still had enough damage. Oh, bad. They don't... It, it can be really hard, like I'm saying, on, on heroes that people don't necessarily play that much. Like, Bach is probably thinking, I'm huge as Bristleback at 15 minutes. Surely there's no way that they can kill me. But it's very difficult to know. It's hard to have that intuition on a hero that you don't necessarily play all the time in the current meta. Right. So I feel like his team is telling themselves that they always have enough time to connect to him, but not the case. They're trying to take a fight as the Bristleback respawns. They've got the mech as well. Can they get a catch? Fuel Scepter, lift up, silence afterwards. Got Black Hole, but Raging Potato is right there. They do have the grip. Gonna use this now afterwards if they want to. Didn't have the mana for Black Hole. He used Malefice. They had stolen already, so they, they, they couldn't have broken it. Did Rubik just throw a creep or something at Bane to cancel that grip? I think he did. Yeah, that must was, have been. That was really nicely played by Raging Potato. And he's already got a spirit vessel. Uh, he must have been f he must have been farming a little bit with the Eidolons yeah. or something like that. Because uh, 53 CS, this is a really nice item timing for him against all three of the enemy cores. It's true. And I believe it also gets... Um, does, does Vessel interact with Arcane Supremacy? I should know this. Uh, not sure. TBH. Yeah. Don't see many uh, Spirit Vessels this early on <laughs> the Rubicon yeah. for sure. But it, it's sort of also this this thing I'm wondering, just in terms of like the more macro sense of this game, like if you're if you're pushing a droid, do, do, were you counting on this timing? Like, are, are you, do you think that they're worried at all now? And Maneski are in a position where they can kind of play it out. What's your thoughts? Uh, like, how concerned are you that you didn't get the 
the maximum amount done with this this super farmed bristle, and now I think you're telling yourself that you still have you still have Enigma, your core still scale quite well into the late game. You're a little bit worried about this Storm Spirit because it was the you know the pick that you hadn't seen before you committed to this strategy, but I don't think that they are. I don't think they should be sweating too much. Okay. Well, this flower in the mid lane, the ninja boogie on the Undyne, is ulti about to wear off. Top lane, Natsumi still just gonna farm away. Beastmaster is here as well. But it, it does feel like right now Adroid are sticking together as four, and, and Mineski are kind of just out farming them around the map. You look at the difference in net worth, and Mac, lift up, you will Scepter, silent afterwards. This is gonna be a rundown here as he tries to get out, but I do not believe that the potato will escape this time as he gets brought down by Mac. Okay. He tried, but makes a little bit of space actually. If Moon gets this tower last at mid, I'm, I'm happy to call that worth. Yeah. Black hole? He just black holes him. Okay. And Moon, not what he wanted to see. All right. The <laughs> Did you see the cast point on Ball Lightning get interrupted by the, the second melt? Yeah. He like he put his arms up, nice. started leaning forward to zip away, and then tick. Yeah. And that was the end of him. Very nicely done. All right, no longer worth, Gabe. No longer worth. No longer worth. Yeah. Jug is a farming though. Yeah. Uh, Nika Baby going for a Manta, natural choice, against the Silence, against the Malphus. Against the Whirling Axes as well, actually, fairly important. Well, another grip now used, Undyne, gonna be killed off, and if they wanted to, I mean, is there a point where you just like walk in and try and go for an Exorcism Roche, Roche or do you need that Black Hole at that point, I guess? Um, I think you need a pick off first. Okay. Undyne Mines too <laughs> scary around the pit. You, you need to kill either the Beastmaster or the Storm, because okay. otherwise the Hawk's just gonna scout you. And then, uh, oh, are, th are Mineski gonna? They have a Solar Crest on the Beastmaster and a Vlad's. This oh, is this wow. is this is completely unexpected if you are a droid. Okay, they okay. scan they, it they, immediately. They, all right, <laughs> where's? Okay, there's nobody. That's a bought. classic. There's nobody bought. All right, there's but they're gonna get it still. All right, all right. It's well, it, you're not expecting that it can possibly be this fast. Yeah. Like, the, there's, there's no way that you think the Beastmaster already has Solar. Silence. Walk in, lift up, Aegis, it's on Moon. Uh, they got there too late, like you said. Creeps. Weren't ready for it. Omni Slash bouncing around. Oh my god, Adroit, you need to get the heck out of there. No, they found him though. Moon almost brought down and would have been able to catch that Aegis. Already the Death Prophet is dead. They're going to try and turn onto this one. Moon standing in the Midnight Pulse. Boomy throws around the Malphus. No, he does take it down now. But he's coming back in a second with that Aegis, and it does look like KP able to escape. Just like that, the chase down. Boomy will eventually be killed. Four dead already. They want to kill Bach. It's dangerous going after the Bristleback, but not when you got all the man in the world on your storm. And a big win as five go down. All right. They've, Mineski have used the farm that KP's gotten ten times better than uh, the farm that Bacarino has. Yeah. Like... The, both offlaners got a lot of space this game, and I feel like KP's item build has done a lot for them. The Greaves and the Crimson Guard helped. They all stayed alive after the Omni Slash, but they were all on like a quarter he, HP. He popped Crimson Guard in that fight, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he popped Crimson. Okay. They, I, I think the Jug was DD'd, though. All right, so, uh, got it. Yeah, Nico Baby just kind of chopped everybody, and now they are very behind. I don't know if he was like solar buffed as well when that he when been. he pops the Omni Slash, but he did some big damage. Oh, that's that's bad. All right, <laughs> at least they burned through the Aegis on the Storm. Sure, yeah, Moon kind of got baited by the Greaves Aura a little bit there, but he's he's only just got his Bloodstone now, so he's gonna continue farming really nicely. Nico's got his Manta, so that can always go for the plus one wave while he's shoving. Lanes and Bristleback is really kind of going to fall off. And Bristleback found again alone. They're not there with him, and Mac wants to keep him alive. This time he might actually survive. Nightmare save for the moment. Enigma needs to get here with the Greaves to save a life, but it does not happen. Black Hole, though, possibly. He's nearby. They're catching the storm. He's dead. 
That grip was almost a full duration. And now they've also found the jug. What is happening in this game? As they've found Nico Baby, he's got to run away, but the slowdown is going to be there. The right clicks, body blocks coming from KP, everything for my carry possible. But the stun comes through, they find Undyne, and he will too die. Oh, jump forward. Good TP out there by the jug, but it looks like they'll also get the Beastmaster as, now oh, Boomy has the chase down, Malifus there, and KP eventually going to fall as well. I, I mean, Bristleback dies that time. They, maybe this was the whole plan. You just bait them into thinking you're always going to feed. <laughs> and then they uh, uh, dive too deep. I guess. Biggest issue, well, there were some nice saves as well. The DP came in, immediately Yules the Jug, stopped him from hitting for a little bit. Right. And then I think the Solar uh, like ran out for a bit. Yeah, it was all around a little bit. Yeah, very, very tough. Very, very tough situation. They mostly needed to have Omni Slash. If they have Omni Slash, that's completely clean. Yeah. The, the grip probably doesn't come out. They don't lose the storm. Sucks to lose some Bloodstone charges like that. I think Mineski just getting a little bit overconfident going before they had their abilities back up. And got to remember that the double damage had a double damage and having the Aegis both played uh, fairly big roles in that previous fight. And CML also, like, uh, uh, this Bane getting almost the full duration grip onto Storm, they, they, they have to be able to protect that, it. That should hardly ever happen, yeah. yeah. But actually, there's not that many ways to cancel it. I guess once you've seen the lift and the roar happen on your Bristleback, it's pretty pretty free. It does kind of create a bit of a problem, too, in this fight that, like, you need... You know, like, he stole grip on Rubik, right? So yeah. now he's got Fiend's grip available. But if you're using the spell steal to interrupt that, then Black Hole is a, a threat as well afterwards. Yeah, um, for at sure. least until the the Rubik gets a, uh, Aegis. No, Aghanims. That's the idea. Good. But they want to make use of this Raging Potato with the grip. Oh, also, a reminder: Raging Potato did not get the second point in spell steal. It's not worth it. Max your other spells first. This has been a PSA. <laughs> All the Rubik players will rejoice. Increase your win rate by 20% instantly. <laughs> oh, there it is. And they got him. It happened so quickly. Yeah, they got to kill Rubik here. This is this is Storm Spirit with setup. No, it's, it's about to lose Fiend's Grip anyway. Okay. So it's Fair hard. enough. But still, killing Rubik is definitely important. Enable your black hole. Um... 25-minute bounties, that, that's uh, four little golden pickups for Mineski. Going to extend this net worth lead even further. It plateaued for a little bit after they kind of botched that fight. but Well, not, they didn't even botch it. It was just the kind of the wrong decision in the first place. So, right, they got a ward on the high ground. It's only going to be Boogie who dies for this. He was trying to be really cute. Cut his way through the trees and then put a ward behind the tower. Yeah. Uh, which is a nice play, but... Gets punished. Does get punished. Adroid one step ahead in this situation. So Bristleback is going to be going for a Lotus next. Um, oh, this this ward is bad news bears. Oh yeah, it is. Oh man, that, that needs to be taken. That out. that's a like storm and beastmaster kill anyone on the high ground and they take your lane of Rax ward. They should probably get the D ward though, because when they pressure for high ground, you you have to be expecting the hawk. So yeah, so they'll, they'll put a sentry for the hawk. That's true. Yeah. But in the meantime. Yeah, at least okay, at least they're sending the bristle. It's gonna take maybe one more hero to kill him versus just the storm and the Beastmaster. Actually I don't even know. With the the solar crest, if Storm gets a big zip and ends up in front of him. So do you think that Adroit have the heroes to be able to play into the late game because yeah. it's feeling like this storm is, is starting to get a little bit out of control. I think they do, but they still they have to hold for like another. I think it's probably like BKB on the bristle and like one more item on the troll. They're just kind of getting out farmed. Okay. I, I I think they can still they can still fight. Them. Late game. It's not. It's not that they will clearly win late game. That's not at all what I'm saying. That if they, you know, if they make it to 40 or 50 minutes, that they auto win. Not even close. But it's also not the case that they auto lose by okay. by waiting for, for a good opportunity. 
Storm finishes off the Orchid. You can see the buyback statuses. Dire have it on the Enigma and the DP. Can't afford to lose anybody else, although everybody else is relatively close in terms of gold. And are they going to smoke up behind their Bristle now? I mean, they have some vision out here at least, but need to be wary of this ward, which is still giving a little bit of vision. Looks like they're just going to walk into their triangle. Also, this ward placed down, spotting out Boomy. And Moon plays so aggressively. He just like I feel as though he plays just to get in people's heads. Like he zipped in, he nuked the mid wave right in front of the Death Prophet, and yeah. then like zipped away before the Death Prophet could react. It's just kind of a like, hey, I'm I'm still here. Are you still awake? Like I'm yeah. making sure that those reaction times are still there because I'm ready to. If you guys slip up for even a second, I'm going to be right on top of you. Stolen axes by Rubik. It's very important that Mineski aren't letting this mid wave ever like cross this line. They've got the ward, so they see what's going on, and they're just constantly keeping it pressured up into the base. I guess it's a it's a poor man's version of like the dire tri camp hold, right? But just constantly. Mid lane is all, uh, mid lane's close to the base. Top lane is always inside of the base, and Jug is farming in the wake. He's like, there's this zone being created for the Juggernaut to just keep farming while they're constantly uh, pushing out those two lanes. Bach, in the meantime, is, is going to try and pick up this BKB Radiant scan, Dire scan, checking if the Roche is up. It's still a minute, 15 seconds before it's capable, or before it will respawn, rather. And right, right now, just trying to do what they can. You can see Moon like has such a good read of where they all are at, right? Yeah. Like obviously the scan hit there as well. Scan the wards. They they have a good idea of what's going on. Um, they do have a blink on the Enigma now. I don't. Okay, that's just now being scouted as he pops out of the out of the smoke. And they are going to deward this high ground. Okay, nice. Oh. Jump in from Moon, though. Finds it. Just kills him in the middle of all of them. Yeah. Th they're close, but, like, not close enough to actually punish. He sees sees Hero's top, knows that the Death Prophet probably just walked away at mid. Perfect. Oh, what dangerous. What is that sound? Bach. Gonna find that kill as well. So, you kill my support, I take yours. Sounds good. And yours is worth a little bit more money. Death Prophet just going for an A on this. Very defensive build from Mac. No sign of the Agadim Scepter. So, uh, just relying on the Exorcism for damage up. But does have the level 18. Box over here. Needs the rest of his team to come help him out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it feels like they're kind of willing to at least move out a little bit more now. I guess that with Rubik gone. The, the threat of the black hole being stolen means that they can actually have it on the table again to pressure. I don't think Mineski actually want to fight right now. If you look at their current gold, they're all sitting on fairly fat stacks. Jug did just buy the basher, but Beastmaster's got 4,400 and Storm's got 4,100. So. Uh, Bach, yet again, he's used the Lotus Orb. He's just dead. Oh, man. I, I don't know. Why is he there? All right, he's going to buy right, back. There you go. But they didn't even use anything big. It's just the roar. Yeah. Now they just back out and go back to They used push. Tombstone. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I guess and the Undying also. Okay. Uh, we're, we're talking about Undying not really being a thing. <laughs> That's past, true. Past a certain point. The Tombstone's going to be annoying, but... Oh, man. They get, they get that buyback for free. Yeah. That's it, true. It doesn't, it doesn't cost them anything. And I think that, uh, you know, Mineski, it's just good recognition of when they can go in and be aggressive. And that's what this Beastmaster pick yeah. gives you, right? Like, you've sure. got the wards around, the you've vision got vision is, everywhere. Yeah, the, the, that's the one thing we probably haven't been highlighting as much. But I need the, to do the, this again. The constant vision is just, the, wait, it, it resets every game? Every game. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. So they see everything. And meanwhile, Dire, they see only what their creeps are pushed out towards. Okay. Well, they came outside of the base. They've spent that gold. Storm's got a Shiva's Beastmaster still holding it. I'd kind of like to see an item on the Beastmaster, but maybe he wants buyback. Um, are they just going to try and push, like, with no buyback on Bristle? And War's I, up now. I mean, I don't know. You, you, don't, you don't push into Storm in this situation. 
this is I it feels like they're a little lost now and need to back out and not lose anybody. If you lose one person at this point. I think what is going through Adroit's mind at this point is that this is what we're supposed to do, right? right? Like, my Bristleback went and did something, and he died, and they used some spells, and so I bought back so that we could take this, like, opportunity or to at least get something out of the buyback. Right. And that's what they're supposed to do, but they can't. They can't do anything in this situation. Yeah. They just have to, like, they didn't even really, they didn't get any wards on the other side of the map. They are just getting completely corralled on their side of the river. And Jug just keeps on farming. Is Troll getting some farm at least while this is going on? Kind of. Yeah, um, he's, he's doing all right. Given the, the situation, he's doing okay. But then all of the Radiant Cores are way up there. Oh, he's master. Lift up. KP, they're going to try and kill him off. Tombstone on the high ground. Need to back out. Wind's not there. He's half mana on the other side oh, of the map. Oh, smoke. Okay, that was nice. Roar used. Can't afford to lose okay. Bristleback, but everybody is nearby. Meanwhile, the Enigma being isolated away from them all. Nightmare to try and save. He gets the Greaves out. Going to throw down the Midnight Pulse, but he's just dead. They lost the Undying, but a bigger kill is on that Enigma. Adroit just going to walk away yet again. He does have buyback if things get too testy. Rubik also going to be controlled now as Adroit walk back in, but Bach is very low, and with the Spirit Vessel on him, you really can't afford to lose him right now. The Omni Slash bouncing to the Creep Wave, but kills off the Bristleback, 100 seconds. Natsumi, he feels like he has to make something happen here. You can't afford to lose the Bristle, but if you fight at this point, you're just gonna lose the game, maybe. So they will retreat, and that's gonna be Aegis. This is, this is what I talked about during the draft. You pick Bristleback as your position three, and your mid lane doesn't have, like, solid catch. Uh, I guess the supports are also the other factor, but they're just getting kited back and forth, right? Yeah. Mineski have them on on a line, and they're just kind of reeling them out, reeling them back in a little bit. They're just playing with them to force buybacks, and they're never truly engaging into the fight. Uh, this Bristleback's just being completely neutered. Right now. 34 minutes in, 14,000 net worth lead. And Maneski, who struggled so much in the group stages, are now looking poised to potentially close this one out. 45 seconds with no Bristleback. They're going to use the Glyph. Tone picked up as well, close to level 20, but they jump in on the back lines and they find a Bane right at the start. They do have Black Hole available, but if you use it and it gets stolen, this falls apart so rapidly. They buy back on the DP, they buy back on the Bane. But still, Maneski are not deterred. They want to take down this tombstone first. Undyne in the front, slept forever by the nightmare, but it is Maneski taking at buildings, and Adroit do not have an answer. They started the series on a dangerous note, Lyrical. They lost that first game. They didn't look on the best form necessarily, but... Nico Baby here on the Jug, here on the Slark, looking good. Silence there, onto the Storm Spirit, trying to get the slowdown. They need to get some more control there onto Storm, but it's not happening. And now the jump forward finds the silence. Lotus Orb to keep that Bane alive for a moment. They might be able to get off the grip afterwards, but no, he's able to dodge away from it. Moon just jumping back and forth and not being taken anywhere. They have the DP dead. Storm is coming back in just a moment. And with that Ami Slash going, too much damage from the Jug. The Black Hole is there, but Moon actually just going to be able to turn it back around. Nico, baby, Rampage, because of the stolen Black Hole, GG is called Maneski. Take him down. The Juggernaut pause after the Rampage. Rarely seen, but much respected. I'm, I'm sure that's the headset keyboard situation, maybe. <laughs> it it uh, might have been. I hope so. Nico Baby. Wait, wait until they release the, the video. Nico Baby. No, Moon, man. Moon also. Moon, I I think Moon is... I mean, Moon played really, really well, but uh, absolutely. I, I actually, I, I think they uh, both I played really well. Like, Nico Baby, you know, you're playing Jug. <laughs> you, press your, you press your R button <laughs> with your buffs <laughs> on your team. Was he ever really... He had a free lane. Bristleback the dude ended with the laning. rampage. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so before that last fight, he only had five kills. Yeah, that's true. And <laughs> <laughs> that might be true. Yeah. Moon did play his heart out there. Moon, Moon, I think Moon, game two, game three, played fantastically. You Raging can, Potato, they all did amazing stuff. That, that's true. Raging Potato looked really, really good on the Rubik 
uh, both games. KP as well, the decision making to just get the Vlad straight into the solar, force the early Roche. Um, he had the farm that they needed to be able to kill the Bristleback. I think all the plus ar like the plus armor from the Vlad Zora and the minus armor from the Solar Crest, right? Just let them shred the Bristleback every single time. And just the the decision making that they made, like they intercepted him when he was running bottom. Right. They left him there because they thought he could get the bounty rune for free. For Adroit had this mentality of our Bristleback is unkillable. We can just leave him to do whatever. Mineski are afraid of him. Yeah. And apparently Mineski just understand Bristleback better. I think it, it seemed to me like Mineski understand Bristleback better than Adroit. Yeah. Because they knew the situations where their lineup could kill the Bristle and Adroit clearly did not have an understanding of when the Bristleback was survivable enough for their team to come and connect and help. Totally. And, and their whole lineup was, like, the whole game plan, right. it seemed, was get Bristleback big and then go run behind him. And it didn't It didn't ever happen. Well, and, and the other thing, too, there is that it's not just, like, the the big thing to me is it felt like sort of Adroit was a, a big old hammer, right? And then Mineski was like a bunch of little pins and scissors. Like you get in okay. there, you, you little you little stab, you kill the bane, then you get out. You kill the other guy, yep. you get out. Like th there were moments where it was so close to being able to like get in and save that bristle back too, because they were very close to each other. But Mineski knew exactly how far they could go to push the limits and kill him, and then get yep. out afterwards. I think part of that is that you have this like very mobile storm spirit against yeah. a team whose catch is. Pretty unreliable. They <laughs> gotta, true. they gotta, they gotta blink Yules into a silence. I mean, they or had they grip have and stuff too. Huh? They had grip for the yeah, band. Yeah, that's that. That is true. But, but he didn't have mobility. But to I catch mean, that, up. that's that's what it looks like yeah. when you have a team that's playing. They know, like, here's the line <laughs> where my opponent's initiation is. Yeah. And they just play right up to that line. Yeah. And then as soon as they scatter, you just dive past and get them. Totally. Like, it's uh. Very well played by Mineski. So Mineski, I, I mean, they're, they're looking really good going into this. They looked like <laughs> garbage on the first day <laughs> of the really, group. They really did. They were so bad. They turned it up. Yep. All right. There you go. Moon showed us how to play some Dota. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in just a little bit with the lower bracket matchup. Still to come in just a few, but stay tuned. Southeast Asian playoffs continuing right after this.